usually do not realize that your physical body is created by you at each moment as a direct result of your inner conception of what you are, or that it changes in important chemical and electromagnetic ways with the ever-moving pace of your own thoughts. Our sources agree that emergency medicine and surgery are extremely important and beneficial. And there's no downside to setting a broken bone or opening a blocked artery once an ailment has progressed that far. With regards to pharmaceuticals, it's hard to argue with a double-blind controlled drug trial. But think about that for a moment. Why is it necessary in the first place? Well, there are many stories about the placebo effect. Doctors noticed that people in studies improved regardless of the efficacy of the drugs that they ingested or the treatment they received. It seems that our own minds can make our bodies healthy or sick based only on belief. There's a well-documented case of a man whose large and malignant lymphosarcoma tumors covering his body dramatically improved and even disappeared when he took a potentially breakthrough medication. But when he learned months later that the drug shouldn't have worked, the tumors came raging back. His doctors again injected him with water and told him it was a new formulation, and the tumors disappeared again. But when it was revealed that that injection was useless, the tumors returned yet again and he soon died. There are also cases of dissociative identity disorder or split personalities causing physical changes that we don't understand. In one state of mind, they have allergy symptoms until they switch back to the other personality. One personality might have blue eyes while the other one has green eyes. Those are traits that we can't control consciously, but they seem to be controlled by our mind nonetheless. All of our spiritual experts thought that their work could help identify the energetic roots of health issues. Casey had respect for prescription medication and surgeons, but he advocated that in all other cases, we need to take responsibility for our own healing in terms of body, mind, and spirit. But let's get back to the soul. Cannon and Casey in particular invited the subject's subconscious to do a body scan to identify energy blockages. This is done by many energy healers today. Recall Newton's first hint of past lives was when a subject pointed to a World War I injury as the cause of his shoulder pain. But how do soul's energy and memory connect to the body? Well, you may have heard of the seven chakras, or energy vortices. These are found in what Casey called the higher energy body, or the subtle body. Think of the chakras like valves that control the flow from an infinite spirit body to the flesh, regulating and balancing the energy to something the body can work with. Casey described each of the chakras influencing the body through its linked endocrine gland. Starting at the top, that would be the pituitary, the pineal, thyroid, thymus, adrenals, Leydig cells, and the testes or ovaries. Through these glands, the activity of the mind and spirit are represented in the flesh and can cause health when flowing freely or disease when blockages exist. Casey provided remedies to clear these blockages. He advocated for holistic, natural approaches because healing must occur in the mind, body, and spirit. In fact, the Journal of the American Medical Association said in 1979, the roots of present-day holism probably go back 100 years to the birth of Edgar Casey in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. One study estimated an 85% success rate on Casey's 22,000 remedies. But that's not the only approach to energetic healing. Cannon and Newton also found numerous reports of a healing temple in the spirit realm. It has a jewel-windowed rotunda. This is where energies can be raised, which manifest in the body of its visitors as improved health. This place is often visited between lives, such as after dying after a long-term disease of the body. Such negativity can transfer to the etheric energy body, which needs to be cleansed. But it's also available to us during a life incarnation as well. Some of Canon's subjects said anyone can journey to this location during meditation, hypnosis, or out-of-body travels with practice. It's overseen by a guardian, but all are welcome. This temple also has a tapestry room. The huge tapestry of multicolored woven cables shows all the interactions 
intertwining and influence of all souls. Some refer to this tapestry as the Akashic Records or Book of Life. This is a giant cosmic compendium of knowledge. It contains all the thoughts, events, and knowledge throughout the history of every planet. Casey claimed to guide people to health by viewing their Akashic Records. Numerous practitioners today specialize in this approach to healing, accessing the records through meditation or intuition. If our souls can raise our bodily vibration for health and creation, are there any limits to the ascension of our body and what we can achieve?